We'll talk about putting the mocker on Brian Green. Jeff Judd speaking about how well he was doing in his car. This afternoon he has come unstuck. Um, we just arrived in a, um, at a corner just miles too fast. It was as simple as that. It was my mistake and um, it's just one of those things I was supposed to put up bluntly. We ran out of talent I suppose. We ended up with electric fence wrapped around the car and some posts and that actually stopped us. And um, there was a river down there and we would have ended up in the um, no, no, we would definitely end up in that. Anyway, that just stopped us dead. But then, of course, the electric fence was wrapped around the car, and every time you touch something, you got a, you got a shock off of it. But anyway, it uh, won't take too much to fix here, and we'll wait. We'll be back in again tomorrow. Very uncharacteristic for Brian Green, but he wasn't the only one. David Hills also coming to grief this afternoon. <laughs> Caught the edge and it spat across the other side of the road and some big grass I thought were out. Just dropped the wheel in a little rut, kept us over. And I was hoping it was going to go one more, but unfortunately it's taken on this route. Probably lost oh, probably eight minutes or so, I think we lost, so get the phone out of all the results. Here we are. Prize baby, just pop the roof out. Feel the windscreen and then we're done. Been here a lot of times and never put on this roof before, but unfortunately it does happen. The big winner out of all of this is Brent Rawstrom. He's moved from eighth to sixth place this afternoon. The interesting thing is, four other times in this event, Brent Wallstrom has finished fifth overall. Actually, I spotted on the podium, but nevertheless, we don't quite get there. Uh, it's just, it, it, it's, we have a pattern of what we want to do for the rally, and uh, we had a misfortune in the first stage this time, but uh, we've driven the rest of the rally as we wanted to run it, and, had, and, and we're not, we just let everyone get on doing their own thing, we did our thing, and it's had a certain pace, and that's what we kept that the whole time. Stuart Reid, who started the day in first place in Astora, he slipped back to second during the day. He's chosen to use his wild car tonight and take the car away and check it. It's getting close to the end, the end of the engine life and it needs a rebuild. Um, we've had issues, as I'm sure everyone knows, starting every morning. Um, if we didn't have a tour up, it'd be a long push. So, and it's down on power. Um, we, we desperately want to make it to the end of the event. Um, our sister car is going very, very fast. Mary is driving very, very quickly. Um, we're going at the same pace we started at all week, but we just need to make sure that we can, the engine's going to last. So we're out of here to a little bit top, and um, hopefully we'll be back in the morning to finish the event. What are you going to do? That's top secret. In the meantime, the sister car of Mary and Evans, he's turned up the pace today. The 1600 class that was being led by Jake Scannell before he crashed is now being led by Keith Stewart. We've done a lot of work on the car to try and make it reliable and it seems to have paid off. So being at the front of the class at the end of day seven is what we're aiming at. Derek Ayson has a firm hold in challenge and he extended his lead as Charlie Evans fell back to fourth. That means Ed Mulligan is now second. And unbelievably, Brody Anderson, who crashed just two days ago, he's in third. That wraps up the penultimate day of the Silver Fern Rally from sunny Caroline Bay in Timaru. Stay tuned tomorrow as they fight it out for the last day of this event.